What do you do with your dead tarantulas? Hello tarantula lovers, I'm Alex and you're watching Tarantula Haven. The question is, what do you do with your dead tarantulas? Well, the first thing you want to consider is, what is the condition of the dead tarantula? Did you just discover it after it's been dead for about a week and it's rotting and molding and smells bad and maybe leaking stuff? Then you might want to consider throwing that tarantula out. But if you discover it and it's still in good shape, it's recently dead, doesn't smell bad and is still in good condition, then you may want to consider preserving it. A lot of us in the hobby got into the hobby because we're fascinated by those creatures. You know, they're cool looking, they're interesting to look at, and um, the hobby in itself is kind of unique in that there's not tons and tons of people that are wanting to get into the hobby, but there are a lot of people that are interested in those tarantulas. So there's a, a, several reasons why somebody may want to consider to preserve their tarantula. First of all, there's the emotional attachment. A lot of us get attached to our tarantulas because they do live for a long time. So if you've got a tarantula that's lived 10 years or more and it passes away on you, you may want to keep it as a memento, as a keepsake that you can go back and reflect on, a, you know, a, a beloved species or specimen that you had. But there's also posterity. Uh, you may want to preserve it for future generations to have as something that you can mount on your wall or have on your desk that people can look at and, and, and reflect on and ask questions about and maybe even themselves consider getting into the tarantula hobby. What I do when I discover a dead tarantula is I'll pull it out and examine the carcass to make sure it's in good shape and not decomposing. If it is, then I'll put it in a Ziploc bag and I'll stick it in the freezer until I decide what to do with it. Believe it or not, they'll actually keep for a very long time. And I kind of by accident discovered that freezing them helps a little bit in the uh, preservation process. Keeping them in the freezer kind of dehydrates them a little bit and it makes it a little bit easier to remove their insides when it comes down to it. And I don't want you to think that I have tons and tons of dead specimens in my freezer. Most of the ones that I do have in there are mature males that have died of old age. I do have the occasional female that passes away for whatever reason. And uh, those of course make the better preserved specimens because they're larger, they're more colorful. Whereas your mature males usually tend to be smaller and spindly. So um, it's not that I'm looking for mature females or anything like that to die but stuff happens and every now and then you might have one that you have the opportunity to preserve. So there are lots and lots of ways to preserve specimens. Um, I have kept them because I've had visions of doing this and that with them. Um, I have pinned some successfully and dried them out, but I have yet to mount one on a shadow box or something like that. But that is what I plan on doing with this specimen. And um, I also have bought some stuff for resin casting and I do plan on preserving some in resin just to have, you know, keepsakes and things like that and maybe even sell them in the Etsy shop or something. But um, yeah, you know, this is something that I've researched a little bit but what I'm going to show you is just basically my method that works for me but there are lots and lots of methods out there you can research on YouTube on how to preserve a specimen and some work better than others but you are free to choose whatever works for you. I'm just trying to show you something that works for me and hopefully can help you out. Now this first specimen that you're going to see is by mature female Syria Pagopas Hottie Hottie. I was heartbroken when I discovered her. I had recently paired her and I could have sworn that she was gravid. And then next thing you know, she was dead. I found her sitting on top of her cork tube, just kind of flattened out and limp. And I couldn't believe that she had passed away. And I don't know what could have caused it. Some people say it might have been a bacterial infection or something like that, but I kept her conditions as optimal as possible, but she just died on me. So I wanted to preserve her because she made a lovely specimen. I found her just, just in time. You know, she hadn't decayed or anything like that. So I went ahead and froze her. Um, unfortunately, one time I went to get something out of the freezer and the Ziploc bag fell out of the freezer and onto the floor. And because she was frozen solid, the abdomen and broke off so it's separated from the rest of the body so the only thing that I'm doing here is just confirming that she was indeed gravid so not that it's going to make anything better in fact it's probably going to make me feel worse but I just wanted to make sure
So yes, that confirms that she was full of eggs and I don't know what happened, but that just makes me feel even worse. <laughs> I would have loved to have had baby Syria Pagopas hottie hottie, but you know, what are you going to do? That's just one of those things that happened and it just kind of soured me on the whole species. So I don't know if I'll keep them again. Maybe later on, if I feel like I can do a better job, I'll, I'll keep them again. But right now, staying away from them. Now, this next specimen that you're going to see is a mature female, Pacillotheria regalis, and she's been in my freezer for four years. Just goes to show you how long you can freeze them, and they still look pretty darn good. Um, this one has a little bit of a sad backstory. Um, I was into just getting into old worlds. I'd been into old worlds for a little bit, and I had a mature male Pacillotheria regalis. I had one that matured out male. And um, I saw an advertisement and this person was wanting to trade snakes for what he had. And one of the things that he had was a mature female P. regalis. So I went ahead and did the trade. I should have gone with my instinct and not gotten her because she was in terrible conditions. Um, but my desire to breed got the better of me and I went ahead with the trade. She was in an Exoterra mini tall that smelled like cigarette smoke. Um, the only thing she had for substrate was just dirt, like backyard dirt, not substrate that you buy from the store or anything like that. She did not have anything to climb on, no hides or anything like that. And she had a water dish at the bottom of her enclosure and she was balled up inside the water dish and the water dish was dry. So I took her home anyway. I set her up in, in a better enclosure and I gave her stuff to climb on and I set her up nicely. Um, I got her to eat for me one time and I noticed that she moved funny. She had uh, kind of shaky movements and was a little bit clumsy, clumsy at taking down the, the roach that I fed her and she would even fall over sometimes and she was having a really hard time climbing. So I started doing research and I started looking up stuff and that's when I found out about DKS. So um, I, you know, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know if there was any cure for it or anything like that. And I checked her for nematodes, but I did not see anything around her mouth or anything like that. So she progressively got worse and lived for about a month in my care and then she passed away. I felt so bad about it that I froze her and I said that I was going to pin her and mount her and, um, you know, preserve her for future reference, you know, just to have her around still because I felt really bad about, about that. So I'm going to show you the method that I use for pinning them and um, preserving them. And um, in a later video, I'll show you the finished product.
So there she is all nice and pinned. And what I'll do now is I'll put her in an airtight box and uh, put her in a cool dry place and let her dry out. Um, I tend to save these little silica gel packets. They come in just about anything that you buy that needs to stay relatively dry, like shoes and electronics and things like that. And I just save them and stick them in a box. And then if I'm doing something like this, I just drop them in the box with them and they kind of help dry things out a little bit faster. And then from then on, it's just a waiting game until she gets all nice and stiff. When she does, then you're ready to mount her in say, something like this like a little shadow box this was given to me by Ben of Jack's Mantis and um, it makes a really cool showpiece that you can hang up on your wall and you know garner interest in your hobby and people look at it and will ask you questions and maybe get interested in the hobby themselves that does it for me today I hope you enjoyed it if you did please give me a like if you want to see more subscribe if you want to support this channel I have a Teespring store where I sell Tarantula Haven merchandise also special thank you to my patreon supporters and a special thank you to my newest Patreon supporter, Constance Carleglio. I hope I pronounced that correctly. If not, please let me know and I'll correct it. And if you'd like to become a Patreon supporter yourself, there's a link down below in the description as well as all the others. Until next time, keep loving them tarantulas, even when they're dead.